Towards the end of the 20th century, David Cook and Doug Sifton, two prominent residents of Coburg, had the unlikely dream of turning this dilapidated old limestone building into a museum, one that would tell the history of our area. It took a while, Doug and David have since passed on, but now, well into the 21st century, their dream has become a reality. This small, unpretentious building has its own story to tell, but much remains still a secret. When was the building constructed? By whom? What for? Some people are sure that it must have been built during the War of 1812 or shortly thereafter as a military barracks and protection from invasion from the South. But while the building has been called the barracks for some time now, when the archaeologists dug below the surface, they didn't find a single bullet, not even one military button. They did, however, find a pipe stem with military markings, but is that enough to convince you that this was a military installation? It was some 20 years after the start of the War of 1812 that James Calcutt, a young brewer fleeing religious persecution in Ireland, arrived in Coburg and bought this property. At that time, it extended all the way to Lake Ontario. Here, he built the beautiful home, which stands just to your left, and opened the Calcutt Brewery, the area's first large-scale commercial brewery. Was this building already here then? Or did he have it built using a design and techniques he brought from his native town of Mount Mellick in County Lawis in Northern Ireland? Whatever it was built for in the first place, you can add church to the probable uses this building served. Old records tell us that in 1854, the new St. Peter's Church of England was being built right over the old one. When it came time to pull down the old one, Brewer James Calcutt cleaned out his malt house and placed it at the disposal of the rector and congregation of St. Peter's for services. Was this the building? There are clues that suggest the building was later used as a blacksmith's workshop and for grain storage. Recent memory recalls its being used as a store place for old building supplies and even as a laundry. One thing we know for sure, when Doug Sifton, John Cook and their friends formed the Coburg Museum Foundation, this building was in a sorry state. But gradually, thanks to the help of memberships, donations and grants from municipal, provincial and federal governments and a lot of hard work, it has been restored, renewed and given a new purpose. As you continue your visit, check some of the yellow mystery boxes. Can you help us discover more of the story the building tells?